fellow Malawians, I stand before you in a state of anguish. The anguish I feel is the same that is felt by all of you regarding the pace of executing our collective agreement to clear the rubble from our governance system in order to refurnish it for the task of building a new Malawi. In short, I share your vexation at the lack of movement in the new direction I set for us when I took office four months ago. As you recall, I first spoke of the need to clear the rubble from the governance system that was an independence day. Clearing the rubble is something that is not only a function of necessity, but also a matter of national urgency. The necessity and urgency of this is now plain, plain to see from the chaos that has recently ensued at the Malawi National Examination Board. To have several secondary school exam papers leaked and the education of hundreds of thousands of students thrown off course is simply unacceptable. Whatever the motives, this is clearly a deliberate act occasioned by elements of criminality, impunity, and negligence that cannot be allowed to continue. When I say we must clear the rubble, it is important to understand what the rubble is and who is responsible for clearing it. Essentially, clearing the rubble means four things. First and foremost, it means removing from those of our state institutions who have committed criminal offenses. Take the Malawi Electoral Commission, for example. Both the High Court and Supreme Court of Appeals determined that hundreds of presiding officers broke the law in their handling of the 2019 presidential election. And yet, today, more than a year after those crimes were committed, there is no sign of any of them being prosecuted by the Director of Public Prosecutions, nor is there any sign that they have been dismissed from public service. The offense, the office bearers responsible for clearing this rubble, this kind of rubble, should not imagine that we as Malawians will relent from calling for the rule of law or that we will look the other way. If any ministry, department, or agency that has this kind of rubble, of criminal elements that does not produce a corrective action plan by the end of this month, I will have no choice but to remove those in charge and find those who will get the job done. In the present case of the Criminal Act of leaking secondary school examinations, I'm giving the Minister of Education one week to work with MANIP to identify and discipline either the people who did this or the officers who, whose negligence allowed this to happen. One week. Additionally, the idea that students have to wait until March next year 
to take exams or that their guardians have to bear the cost of this failure is not an idea I find to be in the public interest. I'm therefore giving the Malawi National Examination Board until the end of this month to remove the top management of MANIB on account of this gross failure and replace it with a new team that will conduct the most credible examinations Malawi, Malawians have, that Malawi has ever had, which must be done no later than January. A country that just witnessed the best national election in history being conducted in record time cannot be expected to tolerate having to wait five months for school exams to be administered. There is a new standard of delivery, delivery of service, that has, to be, that has been set by the Constitutional Court case the fresh presidential election, and the Tonsi campaign. And we will not allow anyone to move us backwards. Secondly, clearing the rubble means removing from our state institutions those whose recruitment into public office did not comply with set procedures and regulations. Historically, such people found their way into public offices through political interference. This is probably the biggest rubble we have, especially MDAs and other governance institutions. That is why I have been systematically assessing the controlling officers in these places to make necessary changes. While a good number of secretaries and directors that fit into this category of improperly recruited rubble have been already removed and replaced, I can assure you that that work will continue for some time. Thirdly, cleaning the rubble means removing from our governor's institutions those who have evidence against them of abuse of public office. Historically, this has happened in Parastatos where office bearers have been abusing their public position either to advance personal interests or the interest of a political party. To set the stage for the clearing of this rubble of abuse of office, I suspended the boards of all parastatos within my first two weeks in office and ensured that they were replaced within the first hundred days. It is therefore the job of each board to come through its peristero and identify this kind of partisan rubble and clear it. A good example is what is happening at the National Oil Company of Malawi Nakma. After I suspended and replaced the board, the new board met and began to assess allegations of abuse of office by some of the executives there. Upon finding that there were indeed irregularities, the board moved swiftly to suspend the chief executive officer to pave way for investigations. I'd like to commend the board of NACMA for being so diligent. Notwithstanding, Malawians across the country have raised a loud outcry over the board's decision to appoint the deputy CEO as the acting CEO on account of the fact that that person in question is a known operative of Democratic Progressive Party. This outcry is not without merit. And since Nakima is, uh, in its entire, entire, it belongs to you, Malawians, I support your right to express concern over its running. For this reason, as your servant, I have directed the Secretary to the President and Cabinet, who chairs the Board of NACMA, to address this anomaly within two weeks. And I'm confident that that will be done. The fourth kind of rubble includes those in our governance institutions who are either incompetent or negligent of their duties. The Malawian people cannot be expected 
to keep paying through the nose to sustain the salaries and allowances of people who either sit around government offices doing nothing except drinking tea and gossiping or who do not, or who do substandard work and have a substandard attitude towards the Malawians they serve and the service they provide. Incompetence and negligence are a cancer within the public service. And I expect controlling officers across the board to make the restoration of professionalism and hard work a top priority within their section. In some cases, this means relocating incompetent and negligent workers to other areas where they will be more useful or less harmful. In other cases, this means restraining staff. I'm sorry. This means retraining staff to a new approach that upholds the highest standards of service to Malawians. In some sections, there is a need to come up with new policies and procedures to make the public service an environment where time wasting and mediocrity are minimal. Those who tolerate mediocrity will themselves not be tolerated. We must set high standards and enforce them with respect, yet without apology. Going forward, I expect all the newly appointed ministers, parastatal boards, as well as the entire public service for that matter, to be mindful that Malawians voted for radical change and have no appetite for non-challenge from any of us. Ever since I took office, I have been nauseated by the number of people in the public service who have just carried on their business as usual, resisting change on the pretext that their approach is how government works. As far as I'm concerned, this mindset shows zero respect for the real of Malawians who gave this president the mandate to bring Senate into government, precisely because how government works has not been working. I'm therefore putting all controlling officers for all ministries, departments, and agencies on notice. If by the end of this year, I find that you have not brought the affairs and people you oversee under control, or have not controlled your appetite for spending on things that add no value to Malawians, or have not increased your productivity, or are not enforcing the highest standards of work ethics, or have not depoliticized your approach to service, or are not implementing the policies Malawians mandated me to put into effect within your section, I will find someone else to do that job. I will not entertain excuses because my interest is not sustaining your inefficient and wasteful ways of doing things. This is a new Malawi. And in this country, no one will be allowed to continue wasting time and resources on activities that produce no tangible results. You either get with it, I'm in the new program, or you get out of the way. Thank you for listening.